right then, in this video we're going to talk about how does a pole changer motor work. Now I've made this video because there's no adequate videos on the internet explaining this very interesting concept. So let's now make a video properly explaining this concept. Now this is going back in time, back before the days of VF drives. Because in the modern day, you have a VF drive, does whatever you want it to do, far too easy. And also in the modern day, all motors are AC. You don't get DC motors in the modern day for any real size application, because DC motors are inefficient and AC motors will do whatever you want with a VF drive. Now, just to clarify, a DC brushless motor is a type of AC synchronous motor. So the only motors are AC, so either synchronous or non-synchronous. And synchronous motors can only work for VF drives, so those are much more recent invention. If we go back to the past, back before VF drives were invented, back before DC pulsing was invented as well, you had just two types of motor to choose from, DC and non-synchronous AC. Now, this was going to be a big choice for your application because the characteristics are very different. You can't control the characteristics of your motor. You can't correct it with a nice bit of electronics because that didn't exist back then. We're talking about pre-1980 at the moment. So you had to just rely on the characteristic. So you need to make a choice. DC motors have fixed good torque. You put your power in the motor, the motor speeds up with a nice bit of torque, nice bit of good standing start, works really well. Trains have to use DC motors because they need that starting torque and a great speed range. But DC motors have pretty much no speed control. Where it was a system of an AC-DC generator speed control thing, it uses a moving part as unreliable. So in most applications, you didn't get any speed control on DC. On an AC motor, you have perfect speed control. The motor runs at the speed of the supply frequency. That's perfect. You don't have to do anything. Just put a power in the motor. Speed control runs perfectly. But there's almost no starting torque. This motor only has torque when the frequency is close to the motor speed. So when the motor first starts going, the motor is not moving, but the frequency is going 50 hertz and it speeds it up using slippage. So that slippage, 50 hertz slippage, running on a non-moving motor. You don't get much torque. And that is why trains cannot use AC motors. AC motors were pretty much impossible because they need the starting torque and great speed range. Another thing, thing I'll just add is you did have universal motors, a very inefficient bodge of running AC electricity in a DC motor. Incredibly inefficient. And some places even had low frequency power supplies, a completely separate power grid, lower frequency, just to run universal motors. That's not really relevant to this discussion. In this discussion we're talking about regular non-synchronous AC motors for speed control purposes but have the bad characteristic of not good torque. Also consider lifts have different loads depending on how many people are in the lift. If there's no one in the lift, the counterweight is heavier than the lift car. If the lift is full, the lift car is heavier than the counterweight. This means that your load on the motor could be positive load or negative load. If you had a DC motor to run a lift, you'd have to work out the amount of torque to get it started. You couldn't just have a fixed amount of torque because it'll go a different speed depending on the load. That wouldn't work. That's why lifts have to run on AC motors. So lifts would use AC motors and because lifts and cranes don't go that fast and need the speed control but your speed's limited. Limited to about 1.6 meters a second because your speed's based on how much you gear the motor because you can't change your motor speed. That's fixed. So if you gear a motor to 1.6 meters a second that will have even less starting torque than a 1 meter a second motor and you can't gear your motor to 2 and 2.5 two and meters a second because the starting torque simply won't get a motor started. This is where the pole changer motor comes in. A pole changer motor is a six phase AC non-synchronous motor. It's just like a regular three phase AC motor but of six phases and how you wire up the phases gives you two different speeds effectively two different frequencies without having a, a variable frequency drive. This means you can run your lift or crane at three different speeds but we're not going to talk about the slow leveling speed yet that's a different subject later on in the video for now just the medium and full speed. You can't put it straight to full speed because you don't have the starting tool. So you put it in its medium speed, wait for it to speed up, then switch to the faster speed and the faster frequency going around the motor is not having to slip the motor from a standing start, it's having to slip the motor from a medium speed. And the medium speed's half the speed of the fast speed, meaning you put it to medium speed, then you can then put it to faster speed and the motor will get to that faster speed. Works really well. So 
how do you wire up your pole changer motor? Now, this is the interesting part. So for the fast speed, it's pretty much just a regular delta wired AC motor. And you're grouping two windings together, so you just have three phases, because of the way it's grouping it, it's just a delta wired AC motor. Quite simple and easy. Now, this is not gonna be a talk about star delta. Star Delta is pretty much an inrush and voltage limiting system because when you put it on star mode you're then running through two coils to get face to face compared with Delta where you're running through one coil to get face to face so adding the amount of resistance. We don't want to add the amount of resistance because we are only going to deal in full voltage. We do not ever want to reduce the voltage. Now this is a very important concept to understand for pole changer motors. On all three speeds, leveling, medium and full speed, we're always applying full voltage. So when we want the motor to go slow, we want it to go slower, but with full power. So we want it to be speed limited. We still want that full power to be there because, because of the load. We don't know how much load we've got on the motor. So that full power must bring it up to even medium speed. So that means we always need that full power to get it going, even to a slow speed. So whether it's leveling, medium or fast speed, we're always running the motor at full voltage. So we can't do star delta. We can't put resistors in the way. So we have to use the six phase characteristic of getting the two different frequencies out of it, which is the purpose of the whole thing. So we put up four different stages of the phase cycle on the full speed delta wide version of the six phase motor. We go around different phases. The orange arrows show which way the electricity is going and the blue arrow shows the final magnetic field in the motor. And we can see it rotating. Now for the medium speed, the blue arrow, the final magnetic field, needs to rotate half the speed. So let's show first bit of the phase cycle, the motor in its medium stage. And this is what it looks like. Notice it's now two magnetic fields. That is the characteristic we're looking for. There's two different magnetic fields on this motor now. And look at the orange arrows. Notice a couple of the arrows go in weird directions. And this center tap of the motor completely changes its characteristic from it being center tapped. So notice there's a couple of ways the electricity will go around it will cause an extra magnetic field on that motor. Very interesting. So this first phase cycle, phase one is very positive, phase two is slightly negative, and phase three is slightly negative. On the next stage, phase one is now going to be just a little bit positive rather than very positive. Phase two changes from slightly negative to slightly positive and phase three is now very negative. So look how much it, the motor's moved when it's wired in full speed. Now let's see how the motor moves in its center tapped medium speed. And it goes backwards. That is very weird. But the way it's done, the actual magnetic field goes backwards. Well, one of the two magnetic fields went backwards. The other one didn't. How weird, and you really have to follow around the electricity paths to work this one out. So now let's put in the next two phase cycles of the motor, and overall, it goes backwards. Really, really weird. But not only is it going backwards, it's going backwards at half the speed. Now, because it goes backwards half the speed on medium mode compared with full speed mode, it means that the polarity of the motor has to be changed as well as the motor being center tapped. This means between half speed and full speed, the motor has to completely be disconnected and reconnected. There's no way of doing this change, leaving the motor powered. It has to be fully switched off and fully reconnected in a different configuration to get it to go its full speed. And that's pretty much how it works. You run the motor up to half speed on a certain timer. After that time is completed, you then disconnect it, reconnect it on full speed and run it up to full speed. And you get speeds fast from 1.6 meters a second. You get up to 2 meters a second and maybe even 2.5 meters a second. So you get a lot more speed out of it. Now, for the final thing to talk about, this six phase pole changer motor with three speeds. How does leveling speed work? Considering at medium speeds, one meter a second, full speeds, two meter a second, and leveling speed is 0 0.3 meter a second. So let's just think about what it sounds like at leveling speed. So imagine you've got a three speed pole changer lift. This is what noise it'll make. Tunk, woo, tunk, tunk, woo, tunk, tunk, uh, Notice at the leveling speed is by far the loudest. So, how do we get a lift to go leveling speed? Now you might be thinking, it's simple. You just add resistors into the electricity going into the motor. But that 
wouldn't work because doing that you reduce the voltage meaning you then reduce the power in the motor and the motor must always be running at full power even when going slow. This is because if you consider sometimes the counterweight is more heavy than the lift and other times if it's fully loaded the lift's more heavy than the counterweight. You have a massive shift of load and reducing the power would mean sometimes the lift can overcome the load and other times it can't. So that doesn't work. We have to have the motor running at full power but with the speed limited and to do that how you do it is you tap out of the other end of the motor so you have the six phases going into the main windings of the motor then at the other end you tap out from the rotor windings the windings in the middle part of the motor at turns and from that you put resistors in and you can create interesting characteristics one characteristic you can do is to get the motor very first started from when it stopped you put resistors in at this stage just to get started those resistors immediately get bypassed as soon as the motor starts to speed up then when you want to slow the motor down you then put these resistors back in and what these resistors do is create a speed limitation I mean it runs at full power full torque but as soon as the motor starts to get faster suddenly the torque just cuts off giving it a very much a speed limit as well as that it has to be some sort of braking effect because you don't want the lift to free fall and get faster if the load's in its position and this somehow actually has that braking effect but it doesn't have enough to slow it down to levelling speed so when your lift's going one meter a second you want it to run at levelling speed by putting resistors in the rotor but how do you slow it down from one meter a second to 0 0.3 because there's not enough braking effect using this torque characteristic what you need to do is keep the rotor resistors powered to provide the braking effect but completely shut off power to the motor itself and to do that you simply switch off one of the phases having one of the phases switched off means a motor can no longer provide forward torque but because the other two phases are on you then get power in the rotor winding still so you can then use the rotor winding resistors to still provide the braking effect quite clever so let's now do a full demonstration on this and to make this more fun rather than just demonstrating it in some boring way let's surf a crane so showing all stages a motor powers up into its medium speed but with the rotor winding resistors energized so it can only actually go leveling speed then onto stage two the rotor winding resistors are bypassed so it goes up to medium speed stage three the motor disconnects for a moment then reconnects into the faster speed then to slow down, it then disconnects for a moment, connects into medium speed, motor slows down to medium speed, then the rotor resistors come back in and temporarily the motor goes into two-phase mode to slow it down. When it's then slowed down to leveling speed, it goes back into three-phase mode to keep it powered at leveling speed. Let's go. Stay three. Now, let's take a look at a circuit diagram. Stay three.
Dann hat ihr das doch.